this straight. Arizona State fires Todd Graham, who was there six years as head coach, got them to a bowl game every year except for one, and won 59% of his games. Look, if you want to fire a head coach because he's not delivering at the level that you seek desirable, that's one thing, okay. But, you know, I mean, look at UCLA. They, they fired Jim Moore. But they at least brought in Chip Kelly, who's a proven college winner. You know, so far as a head coach, at least in recent times, we haven't seen that from Herman Edwards, whom Arizona State hired. At first, I was thinking, well, what in the hell is Arizona State thinking hiring him? He hadn't coached in about 10 years in his last two years with the Kansas City Chiefs. Combined record of six wins and 26 losses. Yeah, that's the guy you want coaching your team. By the way, Edwards has not been a part of college football since the late 1980s. But on the other hand, if you want to play, well, devil's advocate, um, two things. Number one, I think Arizona State hired Edwards because of his personality, his charm, his knowledge, his charisma. He can deliver one hell of a speech. So maybe that can motivate Arizona State to a level that they haven't seen in quite some time. And number two, recruiting. Despite the fact that the Sun Devils, because of the um, hire uh, late last year of Herman Edwards, they got to a late start in this most recent recruiting class. But I thought they did admirably because they went from being in the top 90 to being in the top 40 when all was said and done in the recruiting wars. And you've got to be at your top recruiting, especially when you're going against new head coach Kevin Sumlin at enemy school in that state, Arizona. So we'll see over time if the hiring of Herman Edwards turned out to be a terrific hire, though risky, or turned out to be a complete bust. Well, offensively, I'm not going to doubt their passing attack. It's pretty good, especially with the likes of Manny Wilkins, back a signal caller for the Sun Devils, almost 3,300 yards passing, 20 TDs, had eight picks. And, again, I'm not going to doubt that Arizona State can't throw the ball because they certainly can. And Wilkins probably didn't get enough credit last year for his fine play, largely, I think, because he came from a conference that had um, big-time quarterbacks, you know, like Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold and Khalil Tate, just to name a few. Offensive coordinator, well, now it's Rob Likens' position. Um, you know, former quarterback and receivers coach, he now takes over the reins of the offense that last year averaged 32 points a game, not bad at all, as – uh, Billy Napier decided not to stick around, decided to go to Louisiana. But passing game, I think, is going to be fine for Arizona State, especially the receivers. Maybe the most exciting receiver in the Pac-12 in Nikhil Henry, six feet four, it's tall and elusive as hell. The guy can definitely play. Had almost 1,150 yards in receiving in 2017. Eight touchdowns and a whopping 82 catches. And complimenting him, Kyle Williams with almost 800 yards receiving and seven touchdowns and 66 catches. So Arizona State, extremely loaded in receiving. Now, one thing that will help Arizona State is that they can improve on pass protection. Last year, the quarterback got hit way too many times. An astounding 41 sacks is what the Sun Devils gave up. That can't happen again. But you do return most of the offensive line, and you get an addition to – from Stanford, a graduate transfer in Casey Tucker should play at left tackle right away. And you have a returning starter on the other tackle in Quinn Bailey. The ground game, though, could suffer a lot this year because you lose your top two ball carriers who combine for about 1,700 yards. You lose DeMario Richard and Kalen Balazs. So now it's Eno Benjamin's time to shine. Last year, even though Arizona State barely averaged over four yards a carry, Benjamin in limited playing time did average over six yards every time he touched it. But now he becomes the focal point of the running attack that, again, lost a lot of experience. The defense did register 36 sacks in 2017. Pretty good. The biggest problem, you lose seven of your top ten tacklers. Most of that sack production is gone, including your top four players, Christian Sam and DJ Calhoun, your top two tacklers. So this is going to be a bit of a rebuilding job for Danny Gonzalez, who's now the new defensive coordinator in Tempe, after producing a top 25 defense previously at San Diego State. And expect the Sun Devils to run a 3-3-5 defense. They do get Rennell Rim back at the defensive line spot, 21 tackles a year ago. Expect Coran Crump to play a lot of outside linebacker. Did get an extra year of eligibility via appeal. And perhaps the number one recruit in this most recent Arizona State class should play from day number one. We're talking about Merlin Robertson from California. Herman Edwards' squad really did a terrific job in getting a lot of players from the Golden State. Looking at the secondary, hey, this is a benefit. You get both corners back. Chase Lucas, your leading returning tackler, at 59 stops a year ago and two picks. He's a good one. And Kobe Williams will occupy the other corner position. He had 36 tackles, but 
for the most part, the safeties, which they'll run three safeties, are going to be inexperienced. I highlighted the entire Arizona State schedule to prove a point. Where are the victories going to come from for ASU? I don't see too many opportunities of the victory. Now, the opener, it should be going against UTSA. But the next two games I see as defeats. Michigan State, one of the better teams in the country, even though you get them at home, and at San Diego State against an Aztec squad that will be better than what they were a year ago. And keep in mind that they beat ASU last season on the road. The conference opener, well, it's against a team that is going to be favored probably to win the entire league and gets the college football playoff in the Huskies. Later in the season, you got to play against the second-best team from the North Division. That's the Stanford Cardinal. And then the following week, you get to take on division favorite Southern Cal on the road. Then you look at the rest of the schedule, November. I don't see a single victory coming from that month for the Sun Devils. The Utes and UCLA at home, but you got to go to Eugene and then to Tucson to face your arch rivals, Arizona. The Sun Devils passing attack will be fun to watch, but I've got major doubts about that rushing attack. They lost plenty. And the defense, well, it's a lot of inexperience, and last year's D already gave up a bunch of points anyway. I've got the Sun Devils in Herman Edwards' first year at the bottom of the division, finishing at sixth. That's my look at ASU. See you next time.